This week on Check Please Health Florida, a spot for German beer and bratwurst in Broward County's horse country. I've had it before, but never as good as that. A tequila connoisseur's paradise in Dania Beach. You just wanted to savor every bit of that dessert. And a culinary journey to Africa in the heart of Miami Gardens. You got kind of a, a home-like atmosphere. I felt like I was almost in someone's living room. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world. Additional funding for Check, Please! South Florida is provided by George and Helen Weaver and the Friends of South Florida PBS. I was actually really surprised by how tasty it was. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. It was nothing like I've ever had before. It feels like a taste of Florida. It was the size of a bathtub. Hello, I'm Michelle Bernstein, and welcome to Check, Please, South Florida, the show where regular people from all over South Florida recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week, we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and then the other two go to check them out and see what they think. This week, attorney Mason Nettleton builds a solid defense for his choice for upscale pan Latin cuisine. He says the sophisticated food and ambiance never disappoint, and the welcoming glass of bubbly is the perfect start to his evening. And his fine dining pick is a tequila connoisseur's dream, hidden away in a Broward hotel. Retired educator Gary Gaggle says his choice provides a multi-sensory cultural education wrapped up in a beautiful meal. He says the visit will transport you to a country known for its fragrant spices, flatbreads, and stews. There aren't many places in South Florida serving up traditional Ethiopian fare, but it's plentiful at his Miami-Dade County spot. But first, housewife, mom, and school volunteer Chantel Simmons says when she needs a break from her busy week, she heads to her hopping neighborhood sports bar, where the menu has a German accent and the fun family vibe always makes for a great escape. It's in Davy and it's called Wunderbar Sports Bar and Grill. My name is Stephanie Michalek and I am the front of house manager at Wunderbar. The owner, Daniela, has a love for cooking and she wanted to bring German food to Southwest Broward. Our most popular menu items would be the Jaeger schnitzel. You can do that with veal, chicken, or pork. And then even our Americanized food, it's phenomenal. Karaoke is every Saturday from 7 to 12. All ranges of ages, kids come and sing Disney songs. Again, family-oriented bar, so we've got families here all night long. With Parents, grandparents, dogs, everybody shows up. It's a great time. Wonder Bar is a great place to bring your friends and family and enjoy good food and hear good music and drink great beer. I know that the spot gets a ton of foot traffic, and I think it even gets some hoof traffic. Are there horses around? Yes, actually right across the road is a European sports um, practice. Yeah. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the space. Well, when I walk in, first of all, I'm excited. I am like, the day is over. I am ready to just relax. Immediately, you're greeted, everyone's friendly. It's sort of like walking into a German family picnic. Okay. You know, with the, you'll see it's got picnic tables. <laughs> the last time I was there, I had the frikadellen, which is basically like handmade German meatballs. It comes with a brown gravy, and it's got onions in it, and it comes with the red cabbage, mm -hmm. and then also, of course, the spatzel, the little German egg noodles. I love spatzel. They're so good. So I just good. put the gravy all over them. <laughs> Mason, tell me what stood out yeah, for so you. Yeah, so when I arrived, they were doing karaoke that evening, and uh, immediately I saw there was a large family atmosphere outside. Uh, one of the things I noticed on the inside was it, it very much tracks a, a German beer hall uh, mixed with a sports bar, also with a huge selection of beer and uh, food. So what did you have? 
So I had the Black Forest Kielbasa. It came with a warm German potato salad. Oh, which delicious. Just oh, right amount yummy. of tang on it. Yeah, it yeah. was very good. Was and the sausage good, the kielbasa? It was, and um, it came also with a mini pretzel. I also had the brie and mushroom cheese soup. So that, that was light. Kind of a cream of mushroom, homey style, but uh, obviously with brie cheese. So. so tell me a little bit more about the karaoke. There was um, everyone from an elderly gentleman singing to, uh, to a nice young family. So you, you really get a different flavor of anything from classic rock to, to R&B. And they keep it outside, so if, you, if you're not interested in the noise as much, you can certainly sit inside and have a nice quiet Chantel, meal. Chantel, you're nodding a lot. Have you been That's there for the karaoke night? Spot. Yes. Mind you, not everyone can sing, <laughs> but it's great because it's a people watching spot as well. If you don't want to partake in the karaoke, you're more than welcome to just watch and laugh. And, and no judgment it. though, right? So no judgment, judgment zone. It's after work. No judgment. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Gary, what did you think? I enjoyed it. Um, my entree was less than good, but I think it was just a one-off because I saw some other people ordering the same thing and, and it looked completely fine. You had a roulade, oh. was it? Yeah. It was just, uh, you know, thin beef rolled and stuffed with chopped uh, pickles and had like mustard, I think. It was okay. It, All was, right. it was okay. I was crazy about the red cabbage, though. I love it. The, the red yeah. cabbage. <laughs> I've had it before, but never as good as, yeah. as that. It's homemade. It's delicious. Oh, it, it was I love, amazing. I love braised I was cabbage. hoping one of you would have tried the, um, the schnitzel. My so. dining companion tried the schnitzel. Okay, and it, good. It was good. Did they have the chicken or the veal? It was veal. veal. And it was, perfect. It, I had that. It, My husband had it, It was actually. delicious. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm good. happy. Did you have an appetizer um, or yeah, a dessert? Yeah, uh, I had the potato pancakes. Oh, how it, was that? They were wonderful. Mm -hmm. And they came with um, sour cream and uh, applesauce, which that's how they should come. And they were small, like little medallions. I'm used to a little bigger, but it was excellent. So tell me about the service. The service was great. They were swamped the night I was there. And I mean, I, I can't complain. He did the best he could do. And the runner, she made a mistake and had our, our dinner at the next table, but she had a sense of humor, smoothed it over. Everything was good. I went on a busy Saturday night, and I, I appreciated that they were understaffed, so I knew they were doing the best they could. Um, they kept the, the drinks flowing, though, and that, that helped out. And, uh, it does. Yep. And the drinks are strong. Did you notice that? I, I did. They're very strong. Yeah. I was impressed by, too, they had a large selection of German beers on tap. <laughs> and that, to me, that was very impressive. Yeah. How about dessert? Anyone? Oh, yeah. I, I've got to talk about dessert. <laughs> okay. It was deep-fried cheesecake served in this like huge margarita glass with a huge scoop of ice cream and whipped cream. I didn't know fried cheesecakes could be so good. We both were just like, this is the best dessert ever. <laughs> How about you, Chantel, what'd you have for dessert? I had the apple strudel. It folds into layers and it's almost crepe-like. It's accompanied with like old fashioned ice cream. The serving of the ice cream was huge. <clears throat> yeah, they do large scoops, and I, yeah. I love that about the Wunderbar. They understand that you're here to have a good time. You skipped dessert. I did. But tell me a little bit about pricing. You have a sports bar vibe when you walk in there, but the food is so much more quality and the menu is so much more expansive that, that I found the prices worth. to be right there. So Chantel, <laughs> Wunderbar was your selection. Sum it up yes. for us. And it has a wide variety, something for everyone, and you will love the atmosphere. Mason? Anybody looking for a nice beer selection and a quality menu, I would highly recommend it, especially if you're in West Broward. Gary? Yeah, extensive menu, delicious beers, German beers on tap, and amazing dessert. Well, you can grab a bite and a brew at Wunderbar Sports Bar and Grill, located at 4995 Southwest 148th Avenue in Davie. Open daily for lunch and dinner. Reservations are not accepted, and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $35. So there are so many delicious side dishes that you could eat. I thought, why not teach you how to make a beautiful German potato salad? The first thing I did was I cooked this bacon that's right here until it was really golden and crispy. And then I removed the bacon, but I left the bacon fat. And that is what I cooked these little tiny diced onions in. So let's jump over and do a little mixture and then we'll grab the onions to put them in. I've got some Dijon mustard, and you can use any kind of mustard you want, and then a little bit of granulated sugar, as well as 
some kosher salt and pepper. I'm gonna mix in apple cider vinegar, which is my personal favorite for this dressing. And you really just wanna stir it until the mixture just looks like it's really well combined. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab these delicious onions. Instead of using just regular oil, this is the fat that we're gonna use is the bacon fat. So you really wanna push down all of not only the onions, but the fat that's in this pan and pour that into the mixture. Let's go ahead and whisk that together. So I actually love using warm potatoes for this recipe. So here I have a pot of red bliss potatoes. Uh, they've been cut into eighths and we just cook them very softly until they're fully, fully cooked, but not broken. Um, and then let's just go ahead and fish them out and put them directly into this bowl. I didn't add salt to the water because you know we don't want that to reduce and get very salty. All right, once you have the potatoes in that emulsification, and this is where if you want to, you can mash some of them up a little bit and then keep mixing. And the smell is just amazing. You can smell the bacon and the mustard. Now all we have to do is add some herbs. I've got some chopped Italian parsley. I've got some uh, sliced chives. And let's mix that one more time. And then all we're gonna do is serve that like so. Now remember, I'm serving this warm, but it can be cold. But I definitely wouldn't let that bacon get cold because it'll lose its crispiness. And voila delicious German potato salad. Yum. Now attorney Mason Nettleton is ready to build a case for his newfound spot for fine dining with a Latin twist. But he advises you not to judge this place on the menu alone. The service, ambiance, and of course, the tequila, all add to create a memorable night out. His pick is in Dania Beach, and it's called Toro Latin Kitchen and Tequila Library. My name is James Rogers. I'm the executive chef of Toro Latin Kitchen and Tequila Library. basically taking a little bit of Latin kitchen, Latin spices from around the world, Central America, South America, Spain, and Europe, and putting it together on a plate with some fun uh, ingredients that are American seasonal. We're very local, which is good. We're off the beaten path, meaning that we're not in the middle of all of the tourism and things like that, which has its advantages, but we like it because most people here that come to Toro Latin Kitchen are locals, looking for a great place to eat with food and fun and tequila, so I think it's a great spot. Toro Kitchen is sazón and flavor. Ya tu sabes. Mason, what are your impressions when you first walk into this place? So immediately they have this large tequila bar to your left uh, and then an open kitchen that goes out all the way back about 50 tables. So um, wow. large space. I happen to find it for a nice birthday dinner that I had with my parents and I loved it. The last time I was there for a starter, I had the classic ceviche, which they serve with a leche tigre milk. Leche de tigre. Leche de tigre yeah. milk. Let's let top. everyone know that's not milk. It just, it's all the juices that accumulate in ceviche. Sorry. So that's what we call leche tigre. But was it fish? It was fish, okay. Uh, okay. actual filet of fish. But, okay. um, gotcha. So I would highly recommend that. And then my companion also tried the smoked swordfish dip, which really tastes that smoky flavor if you're looking for that. What did they serve with that? either tortilla chips, okay. or if you also wanted to try the plantain chips, we were kind of going back and forth between. Can you uh, ask this. for both? Yeah, of course, yeah, but they <laughs> okay. actually did bring us both. So we were going As back I and forth. As I would probably and, do. And then for a main course, I had the Tarasco steak. They cook it just excellently. They serve it with um, a side chimichurri and like a house barbecue. Uh, quite frankly, I don't need the sauce. I think it, I just love the way it comes. The presentation there, they kind of go an extra mile on the, on the food. Yeah. My dining companion also had the Tarasco and you can really taste the wood smoke 
and it was perfect. And I do like the chimichurri sauce. Though. Yeah. That, that was really good. Sure. I opted for the cobia, the cobia fish. Cobia, cobia fish. A delicious it local fish. It came in a beautiful yeah. crust, and uh -huh. inside was very moist, very tender, and it was actually accompanied by um, cilantro white rice. It was green, mm -hmm. and so don't be intimidated. But the taste was amazing with little marigolds on top. What did you think when you first walked in? I thought it was a bit too open for me. I was expecting more of an intimate night with my you husband. Mean like cavernous almost. It's just open, really okay. open, no, okay. you know, no partitions. Some people really enjoy that, but for me, I was looking for a more quiet night. It was a bit loud when I went, um, which is a good sign because mm -hmm. it means the food mm -hmm. is delicious, yeah. you know? I you think know. the open kitchen yeah. adds a little bit mm -hmm. to that noise level. Yeah. They did play, you know, nice Latin music in the background, yeah. and that, that was a nice touch, I thought. Yeah. So did you get a little glass of champagne when you first got of there? Of course, they had the rosé that night, which I really enjoyed. So everyone, Mason, gets a complimentary glass of champagne when they come in? I, that's, yeah, that's my understanding wow. is that. And, uh, and it's delicious. Yeah. It mm -hmm. is. It's very good. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, so tell me what else you had. Um, my husband had the Toro Burger, which is, the, I guess, their classic. It comes with a brioche bun, a, very large. It was accompanied with some pickles. I don't know what they did, but they were amazing. And overall, it was rather large. It's buffalo meat, and I enjoyed that. Okay. So you started with a squash soup, correct? Yes, the kabucha, that? the mm -hmm. Japanese kabucha soup. Oh my God, kudos to the chef, it was amazing. It has an underlying tone of wasabi, it's not overpowering whatsoever. Mm -hmm. The soup was so smooth and enjoyable, it was wonderful. I it should really mention was. that um, he's not just a simple local chef like I am, Richard Sandoval is, is internationally known. Nobody knows Pan Latin like he does. Yeah. It, it was amazing. I mean, yeah. really up, top notch. Uh, did you have braised short ribs, was it? Yes, I yeah. did. And it also had a nice sauce, but it also came with this like squash that was pureed. Delicious. And just the presentation it was just, it was a good experience. Did you have some wine with the braised short rib? I mean, um, a good I bread had well. the margarita, and I think it had a s simple syrup that was uh, made with marigold. It was very good, very different. And you had a cocktail as well, Mason, right? I did. I what enjoyed the Southside Mule, um, and it was with El Jimador tequila. I certainly have a full selection of tequilas and mezcal. Um, I did want to t uh, tell you guys I had the traditional dessert, the stuffed churros, and mm. those were Ooh. excellent. I what did were see they the stuffed wow. with? Almost like a cream, cream and cinnamon type uh, filling, and we finished every bite. Mason, Toro was your choice, so sum it up for me, please. Yeah, I highly recommend Toro uh, for the Latin Asian fusion is the best part, I would say. Chantal? I would not necessarily go there for the ambience or for date night, but if I'm going with friends, it's a great spot for friends. Gary? Uh, for pan, Latin American, exciting twist, that's a place to go. Well, you can try the creative Latin fare alongside a classic cocktail at Toro Latin Kitchen and Tequila Library, located at 825 Griffin Road in Dania Beach, inside the Le Meridian Hotel. They're open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday, Reservations are accepted, and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $70. Finally, retired educator Gary Gagel wants to enlighten us on the cuisine of the dark continent. At his choice for a hearty Ethiopian meal, he says it's all about sharing new flavors with friends and family. So ditch the fork, grab some injera, and dig right into his pick. It's in Miami Gardens, and it's called Awash Ethiopian Restaurant. My name is Fouad Wassel. I'm the owner of the Awash Ethiopian restaurant here in Miami Garden. We've been here for Miami Garden almost 20 something years with some other business. So we decided we have to do something and making it like a center of, with Ethiopian culture, with Ethiopian cuisine. Ethiopian cuisine has been a while for a long time. I mean, it's in the history like over 3,000 years, and then it's a little bit exceptional with the food, uh, the way we process it. Awash Ethiopian restaurant is a family 
a traditional and cultural place to enjoy. So why is this a perfect like introductory to Ethiopian cuisine? Well, it, it's just has so many exciting flavors and and for me, it's and the, textures too, it's, right? And the whole eating experience mm. because you have to use your your hands. You use parts of the injera to eat with. That's your your utensils, and it just makes it to me just more intimate experience with the food. And it's a different experience that people don't normally get to enjoy. This last time, I had a waze tibs, and it's a spicy kind of beef stew. Okay. Are there vegetables in it? green peppers and onions, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I think the spices maybe are heavy on ginger. It's just very tasty and, mm. and complex. And what else? And also had some spiced beets. They were very good. And then also some red lentils. Very tasty, very good. Chantel, you had the beef tips too, right? Yes, I did. I liked that they were, um, they were savory. They were bite-sized, so for uh -huh. them to hold so much flavor within such little pieces mm. of beef was mm. extraordinary. You can taste all these little underlying toes was, um, tones was delicious. Yeah, it's That's very, lovely. very complex. Yeah. That's what, and your nose yeah. is just like, with the, yes. all the spices when you get in, yeah. it just makes you ready to eat. It smells so yeah. good yeah. in there. Like Mason, is in. this your first venture into Ethiopian? It was, and um, I went in very open-minded and I enjoyed it thoroughly. I did the awash um, entree, which is the combo for two, and it gives you a little bit of everything from a chicken and red sauce stew, mm -hmm. uh, which I loved. They served it with a hard-boiled egg, which I found to be interesting. <laughs> Probably uh, soaks up all the goodness, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and then also a, a vegetarian dishes as well, everything from like a, a squash puree to a green green beans and um, almost a pea and cabbage type combination. That was delicious with the injera as well. Um, for an appetizer, I had the cold lentil and red onion mixture. It was... Um, was it kind of like a lentil salad It almost? was, and I, that's what, that's how I thought of it, almost their version of what I, the German potato salad, but what right. they would serve almost for um, a side. And I, it's something I'm going to try and make at home because I found it to be such a great hmm. warm weather dish. And also for... While we're on appetizers, they uh -huh. had a delicious flaky pastry um, with either a beef or a lentil filling. I think they're good. called sambusas. Sambusa. They are sambusas. Okay, they I think yeah. everybody has an empanada, yeah. but it's called something I different. I loved the little triangular. Yeah. There was so petite, you know, it was... Yeah. Was there a it, dipping yeah, sauce too? Yeah. It's oh, a the little spicy. Sauce. My goodness. Yeah, it was spicy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> Very good. Flaky Did, and fresh. Yeah. So do they ask you if you can handle the heat or... Or they don't even ask it. Just I don't remember the masking. They just bring it <laughs> no, up. But it's I, on okay. the menu. It is. There is. There's a little warning spicy. on the menu. How was the service? Did they help you through the menu? Very much especially so. Especially for your um, first time. They were very helpful. You got kind of a, a home-like atmosphere. I felt like I was almost in someone's living room, you know, and um, <laughs> nice music. It was a very warm, friendly place. Did anybody have anything sweet? I had the chocolate cake. It was just so much chocolate. The cake was chocolate. The icing was chocolate. There was even covered in like chocolate shavings. So if you're into chocolate, it was a good dessert. Gary, tell me a little bit about the, cho uh, the, the coffee ceremony, how they do that. They bring out this big tray with the ceramic coffee pot and then burning incense. I love that. How beautiful. Yeah. Did yeah. anybody have coffee? I did. The way it's served, it's just wonderful. Um, the incense is paired with the aroma of the coffee, and they just come together, and I literally just took a moment to just inhale, sure. and the coffee was very smooth and rich. How cool. I went a different route than the coffee. They have a juice bar, sure. so I sure. tried their fresh lemonade, and it was excellent. They oh, with the it, mint? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, so I was oh, going to say, that, they that's it amazing. Delicious. It's so refreshing. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Especially with this type of food that has a lot of spices, it's a bit heavy. It really cleanses the palate. You it, know, the juices and, really do. Yeah. Yep. Easy to find? Uh, easy to find. It's right off 441. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a nondescript shopping mall. Sure. Yeah. And from outside, it's not that impressive. Mm -hmm. But once you go inside and hear the music. And, and it's quite large. Right. Once you go in, my goodness, it's huge in there. Well, Gary, a washi Ethiopian mm -hmm. was your pick. Sum it up for us. Leave the passport at home and explore the exotic taste of Ethiopia. Chantel? I enjoyed it from the smell to the atmosphere to the mm -hmm. peacefulness mm -hmm. I felt and everything was delicious tasting. Mason? Yeah, if you want to have a delightful experience tasting a, another side of the world, I highly recommend it.
For exotic African flavors, you don't need a passport. Just head to a Wash Ethiopian restaurant located at 19934 Northwest 2nd Avenue in Miami Gardens. Open every day but Monday for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $30. Well, we've had a wonderful time. I want to thank my guests, Chantal Simmons, Gary Gagel, and Mason Nettleton. For more about the restaurants and recipes featured in the show, or if you'd like to apply to be a guest reviewer, visit us at checkpleasefl.com. And as always, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Join us next time for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please South Florida. I'm Michelle Bernstein, and I will see you then. Salud, everybody. So Sending you kisses from all the way over here. <laughs>